the wisdom and experience of Robert Craddock on a Monday. Hello to you, Crash. G'day, Jared, and it's great to see you've got the Lions back in your top four, eh? Yeah, uh, got them in the seedings. <laughs> mate, I had them, uh, my hands in the air earlier this season. I thought they were the Joe Bidens of the Premiership, just sort of wandering <laughs> around to nowhere in particular. <laughs> oh, there's so many jokes to be made on that front. As if it wasn't serious, you'd go there. So I, w- I knew the result crash, and I sat down to watch it yesterday morning. And when South Africa needed 30 from 30 balls with six wickets in hand, you go, oh, I must have seen the wrong score. I, I just can't see how they wouldn't win from here. Yeah, just think of it, Jared. In T20, 30 balls, 30 runs, six wickets. It's extraordinary. The only thing I, I would say, was it a choke? Yes, it was. But 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 some chokes are worse than others. And when you've got Jasper at Boomerah, it's the most skilled white ball practitioner in the world bowling these. He, he, he's just so clever. And what I love about him too is he enters zones which are a risk for fast bowlers. He'll pitch it up full trying to, trying to swing it, trying to hit the stumps, trying to get LBWs. He said, if you, if you want to hit me over your head, go try and do it, champ. And, and I just thought it was the... I love the way that bowlers won it. It'll always go down as South Africa's big choke. But I tell you what, Boomerah, four overs for 18 and just honey sweet at the death. I just thought it was the great triumph. It'll give so much inspiration to bowlers around the world. India have broken their drought and poor old South Africa who previously had not got to a white ball final. When they did, we all wrote the story, Jerry, didn't we? Yeah. Ah, the curse is broken. But guess what? Now the monkey on their shoulders is King Kong after this because whatever stresses they had about choking previously, this magnifies them, doesn't it? And, and it's just, gosh, sport can be cruel, can't it? And this is where the T20, the, the capacity for momentum to swing wildly – uh, is is extreme as you can't get this in many forms of cricket, can you? Is that that equation? Thirty from thirty six wickets in hand, even twenty six from twenty four, still with the six wickets in hand, you pretty well know how that's going to end. But T Twenty cricket can jackknife you just in a matter of balls. Class and nicks off, and suddenly there's a, a pour over, and then Boomerah strikes. They only get two from the over, and they're neck deep in it. But the catch at the end that so that Surya takes and. Smithy captures so perfectly. So 16, what is it? 16 from the last over, a ball that is clearing the boundary. And this is modern T20 cricket, the the acrobatics of it, to take a catch either side of the rope and complete it within the laws of the game inside. It was almost a signature point for, for, for the T20 game, wasn't it? Because that's T20 cricket at its best. It's the it's its greatest legacy to the game is these outrageously skillful outfield catches. And I've watched, you know, replays of it so many times. Do you think it was a fair catch, Jared? I mean, you, Sky Yadav, the, the, there's one replay of him from behind where just the, 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 the cushion for the boundary rope just seems to wobble a fraction as his foot leaves the ground. But some people said, no, no, that's just the, the, the grass giving way. Did you watch it? Did you, were you uh, totally convinced it was a catch? Um, totally convinced. I thought on the balance of probabilities it was a catch, but it, it is so that that's modern T Twenty cricket, isn't it? Some of that makes me feel uneasy. I, I have a personal prejudice. Once the ball's over the boundary, the ball's over the boundary. I, mm. I, I would rewrite that rule, but that but that's not how it is right now. Yeah, uh, uh, do you know what? I don't mind that rule because you know why? In T20 cricket, any rule that enhances the spectacular play and that gets kids thinking, holy dooly, what a great, great game cricket is, that'll do me. And, and I know you see, but, but those highlights, they, they went around the globe. Yeah, yeah. You know, they finished on all sorts of quirky forums in the United States. And what about this for a catch? <laughs> you know what I mean? If you're going to get that audience in the United States, at times, you've got to be fruity and funky, and that's what that is. That's why I quite love that rule. Yeah. So I would have it that once you're outside the boundary, you're out. Mm-hmm. You can't be going outside the boundary to take catches and bring it back in. Mm-hmm. Um, be like jumping from the front row of the bleachers in baseball and, and taking the catch back in. But anyway, that's that. Uh, I sort of got sidetracked there. It, it was absolutely spectacular and so fitting that a T20 World Cup would essentially be decided – by that sort of feeling, because that's been the great addition that it's offered to the world of cricket.
It, it has, and any tournament that India wins changes the face of cricket. Just as them winning the 1983 World Cup in 50 over cricket, it, it popularised in that country. So I saw a, a, a survey about whether which is the most important achievement in cricket, the T20 World Cup, the 50 over, or the Test Match Championship, which runs a distant third, and the numbers are changing violently towards this very World Cup, which we might seem ho-hum about. It was on Amazon Prime, and I don't think that worked at all, Jared. It just didn't get the masses in. But it was a great result for, for India and also their coach, Raul Dravid, who was the one Indian player absolutely adored by his contemporaries. Do you know I was looking at Steve Waugh's photographic book, and Steve just loved Raul Dravid. And, this, and he, he, so much so that when he did this pictorial essay of India, he went and got special photos of Raoul taken by himself. And he even got a photo of a photographer taking photos of Steve Waugh, taking yeah. photos of Raoul. <laughs> and, and he said that from the moment I met this guy, and he was such a humble fellow, like his nickname, I remember when he first started, was Jammy because his dad worked in a jam factory. <laughs> no, never had a rap on himself, Raoul Dravid. Steve adored him. And they just, he was the, when Australia was on top of the world, they deferred to very few cricketers. They, they would very rarely praise a rival. You, you'd hear muttered praise about, geez, Lara's good, isn't he? Yep. But they all said this, they'd come off and say, hey, what about Dravid's technique? I mean, that is, that's batting technique 101. They all adored watching him play. So somewhere in the last 24 hours, there, was a, there would be a text from Stephen Waugh's house in Sydney to somewhere in Barbados, Terrell Drab would say, mate, you deserve that. <laughs> They're at Coley, 76 in the final. So it had barely made a run all tournament crash. And then uh, it was such a stylish 76 as well. I was thinking, so that's his final international in T20. Um, in the, it, the four batters of the generation, as has been roundly discussed through their careers has been Smith, Root, Williamson and Coley. And Coley was clearly the best of the three format batters out of those four. Oh, you've got it. That's the thing. Like he, he, and he never did anything which embarrassed the textbook. Like, you know, he, he, he could score 70 off 50 without leaving, uh, making a fool of the textbook or trying anything ultra funky. He was very much a classical stylist. And we mentioned Steve Waugh. And, and I remember once, you know, Steve said to his son, uh, who, who was learning the game, he said, look, if you just watch one player for technique, let it be Coley. He's not the, he was never the force he was from about three years ago. I reckon his eye went on him really quickly. And he's had to scrape and hustle. He, he, he's tr I think he's almost overtried, Jared. Special diets used by Novak Djokovic <laughs> and all this. A, a mega intensity, which was almost unhealthy. He gave away captaincy in most forms of the game. But, but he, he, he's just had to scrape for everything he's got over the last few years. But this was a lovely farewell for him. And it was funny. <laughs> they got to the press conference and then Rohit, Rohit Sharma said... And I'm joining him too in T20 <laughs> retirement. Oh. And Ben Horn said to me that you could, from the Indian journalist, you could hear this. <gasps> <Yes>. <laughs> this beautiful gasp, which, you know, nothing shocks at a press conference normally, does it? We just, you know, we take the good and the bad. But there was this gasp. And he said, and then there was this rush on Rowett to sign bats and everything. And <laughs> it was magnificent, apparently. Close the book on Australia's campaign for us. Yeah, time to move on. Uh, you know... One player under 30 in the starting team, Tim David. Uh, next youngest was Travis Head at 30. We've made one semi-finals of the last five World Cups, Jared, in T20s. Now, that's a big stat, isn't it? Would you agree? Yes. Like, it says we're playing with an older team. We're trying to say that, no, no, test match players will win this uh, when, when they often don't. We've probably turned our nose up at the T20 specialists a bit. But I reckon in the next World Cup in two years' time in Australia's T20, there would be three quarters of this team will go. In comes the likes of Inglis, Fraser McGurk, um, you know, Spencer Johnson, Xavier Bartlett. You know, it's, you, do you agree? Right ready for a freshen up. Time starts now. Yeah, yeah. And took the punt on the, the old boys at this one and it didn't pay off. But that's back-to-back -back World Cups that they've missed the semi final. So uh, time to try to fully harness the, the T20 expertise 
uh, here, I, I think, is yeah. if we do regard the BBL in this light as um, we, we've never really been able to parlay that by the, the against all odds win in the World Cup in Dubai. No, and, and also... I also think it's time to work really hard on fielding. I mean, we all marvel at Marnus Labouchain's exceptional catch for Glamorgan the other day. Mm. Well, guess what? Guess who works is the hardest worker in the team on fielding. And I don't mind this modern trend of saying to players, you train as hard as you feel is appropriate. But here's the thing. There is a concern that with older players, not a lot, a lot of them really want to dive into fielding uh, training like you sort of have to to be at razor sharpness. Australia dropped about what was it? In two matches, dropped five catches each. I mean that's um, that's damning. And Mitchell Marsh is a captain. He dropped a few. And Jared, the the catch he dropped in the last game, he would never have dropped that if he wasn't captain. You know what I mean? That was a guy with ten million things going on in his head. Yes, and so doing that for the first time was a, a big task at a World Cup. Uh, so, And the final element, which you alluded to before, so the placement on Amazon. So this was an ICC deal. This is not a decision made in Australian cricket circles. This is far above that. Uh, how significantly do you think it marginalised the tournament on these shores? Hugely, hugely. I mean, just, just go to the coffee shop, walk around, ask people, what did you think of Australia in the, in the T20 World Cup? And they'll say, oh, I didn't watch it. It was on uh, Amazon, wasn't it? I didn't quite catch up with it. And people may say, oh, hang on, you're saying that and, and you appear on Fox Sports, which, you know, is is uh, also a subscription network. Yeah, but, but Fox is also mainstream. It's got so many things on it. As an Australian, 30% of, of uh, people are, are on to Fox Sports, whereas I just felt this didn't work. And uh, I just didn't... It, it failed the water cooler test for me, Jared. I just didn't hear. I, I just couldn't find anyone who was watching it. I don't know how you felt. I think that's that's been um, pretty well sent through on the the text. I think when a sport is placed uh, outside the norm, so we're conditioned to, well, we've been conditioned over a long time to have cricket on free to air when the national team is playing, and then on Foxtel and KO where there's the dedicated channel. And the moment you stray outside of that, you've got people fumbling around for. Well, where is it? And then can you get people to, to buy into it? Amazon is, is, it might be niche, but it's it's hardly um, unknown. But that sports, the sports following public, that it's so hard in this country to just break the habits of where you're looking for it and then to get people to be motivated to go and find it and subscribe to it to have, them in, to have it in front of them. Mm, yeah, absolutely. And, and there's, there's so many streaming services now. That's the thing. And this was just another challenge for people. But uh, no, I didn't feel it worked. They got, what was it, $80 million a year for it or something, which carved up between a lot of nations does not stretch that far.